All right, guys, so we've been reading a lot of comments. A lot of you actually want to learn how to TIG weld. You haven't TIG welded before, or you just started and you want to get a little better with it. So we're going to start a little video series on how to TIG weld. I'm going to break it down for you to start from the very basics on how to set up your machine to be able to TIG weld, how to sharpen your tungsten the right way, always make sure it's sharp, and preparation for the metal, and then we're gonna get into welding it. And we're gonna start really easy. We're gonna start with a regular 90 degree one. A lot of people like to start with two pieces of plates together, but if you don't know how to actually move your cup and move your torch, you're gonna go trail off somewhere. So if I throw you in a 90 degree, you're locked in, you can't go anywhere. It's the easiest way to learn how to start laying down some dimes, getting proper penetration, and we're gonna get right into it. All right, so first things first, you wanna get your tungsten nice and sharp. A lot of people have their own views on what tungsten to use depending on what metal you're using to weld. So I personally like the gray tips. I think they're serrated. They all have a little bit of something different in the tungsten, so they all react differently to the metal and also react differently to your settings and your welder. So, but first, you wanna sharpen it. The easiest way to do it, safest way to do it, is with a bench grinder. And if you see here, I got all these little grooves in here. I've been using this thing for five years, strong, to sharpen tungsten. And you just turn it on and get a nice tip to it. You don't wanna go flat like that, you wanna spin it. So it actually moves the electricity. If you could do it straight, they actually have tungsten sharpeners if you want to spend like $300 on it. I don't. So I like the bench grinder. You can also use a flapper disc if you have a buddy to hold it or a vise to hold the um, flapper disc in. And then you just take and spin it on the flapper disc and get your tungsten nice and sharp. Sharper the tungsten, the tighter the arc, the better looking the weld. If you dip your tungsten, take it out. Resharpen it. It's okay. They come like this long, all right? So if you're not sharpening, if you're just learning and you're not sharpening your tungsten every five minutes, you're probably a prodigy. So don't feel bad. Don't get downhearted if you constantly dip your tungsten or stick your filler rod into it. It's part of learning. It's no big deal. Pull it out, let it cool down first, and then sharpen it. And if you're smart, you'll get like three or four of them lined up. Take your tungsten, snap it in half, and then you can sharpen it. I wouldn't say sharpen both sides, a lot of people sharpen both sides, but when you're learning, nine out of 10 times, you're gonna dip your filler rod into the actual tungsten and it's gonna bulb up and you're not gonna be able to flip it around anyways. So you can end up getting your tungsten trapped if you do that and aren't paying attention. So just sharpen one side. There's no reason to sharpen both. All right, so before you set your settings up on your welder, you need to know what kind of material you're working with and the thickness of it. So I'm using one of my plates that I use for my core wrap brackets. It's a Drift HQ thing. It's eighth inch steel, and it's gonna go against 14 gauge mild steel as well. So you add those two together, that's what you wanna figure out is if you're doing eighth inch steel and you're putting two pieces of eighth inch together, it's technically not a quarter inch steel. So you wanna turn your heat up higher than what you normally would if it says you're running eighth inch, Unless you have a fancy welder that you can tell what kind of weld you're doing, whether you're doing a joint weld or a flat weld, you, the machine will know. But if you don't have one of those, you have to turn up your dial and dial in your machine to actually get the right heat settings so you don't over torch it and you don't under torch it. Because you want to be able to have full penetration on it and not just have a surface weld. Surface welds aren't strong, they don't hold up, they will break. So you wanna make sure that you have full penetration on it and we'll get into how to set that up and we'll do a couple different settings to show you what is too hot and what's too cold. So once this bad boy turns on, I'm using the Typhoon 230 from Everlast. It's one of my favorite machines I've ever used. Very easy to use for people who don't know how to weld. They actually have a lot of simple things on here, but I'm gonna show you just the most basic way to set up your weld. You got a dial right here. You just wanna turn up your amps. Your pre-flow, your starting amps, none of that really matters when you're learning how to weld. You wanna learn how to make a good bead and everything, and we'll get in depth on what to do to set up your pre-flow, your post-flow, your starting amps, your ending amps, all of that stuff, whether or not you wanna use pulse. But for now, we're gonna do that eighth inch and the 14 gauge together. So I'm gonna set this at 120 amps, and that should be hot enough to go full pedal 
and get penetration, but we're gonna do a couple of tests and I'm gonna show you how to tack it in place first. Quick thing, make sure your argon is set at the right CFMs. So titanium and stuff, they use a lot, a lot of air movement, a lot of um, argon. Steel, stainless steel, aluminum, not so much. You wanna keep it right around 20, 22 is my happy spot for everything. Titanium, shoot that bad boy to the moon. Can't go too wrong. But otherwise, another thing, turn your AC ducts off. Don't breathe over your weld while it's cooling down. Um, don't let anybody walk by you. You know, stuff like that. Simple things that will irritate you and you don't know why your weld is messing up and it's getting a bad field. It's usually because there's some type of air movement. Welders, for instance, they have cooling fans. Don't put your welder right next to where you're welding. There's a reason they give you a 20 foot cord. Get it away from the welder. That way you don't have any, because the air blows out the front, the sides, the backs of welders, they blow out everywhere. So keep your welder away from anything you're welding. This is a lot different than MIG. Your atmosphere is everything. So you don't want your argon atmosphere to get messed up because it will corrode and mess up your weld. It'll show that there's, um, contamination in your weld, not commercial, sorry. All right, so we're gonna do a 90 degree weld on here. And to tack something, it's really easy. You don't have to add any filler rod as long as you have a tight gap. So if there's no air between both of those, you will be able to just heat it up and fusion weld the two metals together and create a weld. So you don't actually have to do fill a rod in there or have a buddy hold it. They also have magnets and stuff, but we're just gonna do a quick tack on both sides, and then we'll go from there. All right, next what you're gonna wanna do, now that you have your tungsten all done, you have everything tacked in place, you're gonna wanna get your filler rod. So you wanna get the right filler rod for the right material that you're using. They have certain ones for stainless, certain ones for mild steel. Mild steel has this copper coating looking on it, so it's gonna look different. So you'll know the difference between all of them. Stainless steel one is very shiny. It's like chrome basically. And then aluminum looks just like stainless steel, except for it's half the weight and it will bend and not rebound. So if you do this with an aluminum one and you let go of it, it'll actually stay bent. The stainless ones will bounce back and so will the mild steel ones. So you also wanna make sure that the size of your tungsten is never smaller than the size of your filler rod because then you're trying to do too much. So usually rule of thumb is you want your filler rod and your tungsten to be the same size. So I use three thirty seconds um, and one sixteenth. So this one is the three thirty seconds size one. It's a little bit bigger. I like it a little bit more control. Uh, it's easier to sharpen and easier to snap in half and do all the things too. So that's just personal preference. I don't do anything really, really thin either. The thinner material you use, the thinner filler rod and thinner tungsten you're gonna wanna use so it doesn't heat up the metal and blow through it. So for everything I use, I use the 316s because it's the perfect size for the thickness of metal that we use. So from there, I'm gonna show you how to start just a basic weld the easiest way to figure out and get your puddle in the position that you want is to feather your cutter. So you'll start it and you'll get an arc going. So when you're first starting out, trying to get a bead and trying to get your filler rod dipped in and everything, pedal control is huge, okay? You don't have to have it all the way cranked up. You can set it to an easy setting and then get a feel for the pedal. And you wanna roll into it and get a puddle started. And you, if the puddle starts getting too big, you just back off the pedal a little bit. Less pedal, less amps. More pedal, more amps. More amps, bigger puddle. Less amps, lower puddle. So that's how you fluctuate how big your puddle size is on here. And then once you get it dialed in, you can actually get it set up to where you go full pedal on it. And you can just go all the way across it and not have to worry about it. But until you get comfortable with it, don't feel like using your pedal to make your puddle big and then rescind to be able to move. To get comfortable with it, it's fine. Do that, get comfy, 
you'll see how your dimes start to form. It'll give you a, a sense of hope that you're doing something cool and it's starting to look good. Another thing, let your argon air out on it. Don't instantly take it away and look at it because you'll go from a really nice shiny weld to a crusty gray weld and that's the contamination we're talking about. Your next biggest thing is cup placement, tungsten placement, where it goes and the angle that you actually place it on. So you want to be directly in between both of your metals and you want to see, pretend like it's sitting perfectly straight up and down like a 90. You want to be able to hit just like that along the whole thing. And it's always safer to put it there and check it out to make sure you can get that with your cup size or with your height of tungsten before you go into the weld to make sure that you're getting both metals evenly heated up and the weld evenly distributed amongst them. All right, let's start. So we're just gonna roll into it soft. We're gonna get a puddle going and we're gonna go about an inch and we're gonna stop and I'm gonna show you what it looks like and then I'm gonna hop over this and I'm gonna show you how you can actually use your cup to keep your position. So instead of holding it up, some people have shaky hands. I get it, I drink coffee too. Caffeine will get you shaky. Don't do it while you're welding because this eh, will make your welds look like crap. That's why you use your cup. Cup, you can rest it on there and you can drag it across and it'll keep that same consistency throughout the whole thing. So use your cup if you can. Parts that you can't, they sell little cool tools like little um, TIG finger that you can rest on super hot metal and it won't burn the hell out of you. I'm gonna put gloves on just because it's gonna get really hot. And first we're gonna do the lay of the pedal so you can see it get brighter and then it'll dim down and you'll watch the puddle actually get solid and then it'll puddle up again and then it'll get solid. And as you're doing that, you can move until you get comfortable. So you wait till you see your puddle form. It's gonna turn into liquid silver. Once your puddle forms, then you dab, and then you can move forward. Your puddle will form some more. Put in another one. Move forward. Now, if you have the right setting on there, it's getting toasty. Play with gloves. That's the Molly. Now your next thing is going to be adding filler rod. And a lot of people don't know how to do it properly. And there's an easy trick for it, especially if you're gonna do aluminum, you wanna add a lot of filler rod. So just dabbing it isn't going to do it for aluminum. You actually wanna force it in there and fill it up. So what I do, you can take your glove off, you probably see it a little easier. I hold it like you do a pen, like you're gonna draw. But you stick it in there like that and when you want to add more from this side to this side, lock your thumb in there, squeeze your fingers down, let off your thumb, and pull your fingers out. And it'll give you about an inch and a half, two inches of more filler rod. So you can sit there, and this is something that it's good to practice with, especially if you're trying to do welding full time, like for a job, and you want to be fast and efficient at it. Being able to add filler rod to your welds makes things a lot easier. So just take a filler rod and just play around with it while you're sitting around drinking beer, while you're sitting around watching TV. If you wanna get good at it, just grab a piece of filler rod. You can even take a short one, it doesn't need to be this long, and just practice moving the filler rod through your fingers. And eventually it'll get really smooth at it and you can do it while you're welding and it won't mess up anything. So you dab, Add more, dab, add more, dab, add more. All right, so you're gonna push down the pedal, add your filler rod, and then you let off. And you're gonna see that the puddle goes away when you let off. The more you add, the more it gets there. It'll make a bigger puddle the more pedal you add. So all you wanna do is make a puddle Add filler rod, let off a little bit, move it over like a sixteenth of an inch, put down the pedal again, add more filler rod, move over, rinse and repeat. And you want to do this until you get consistent with it to where you can just hold the pedal down and run with it.
All right, so I wanted to show you what too hot and what too cold actually looks like. Well, now that I've messed up the good welds from going too hot on that side, you can see this is a consistent one and this was a pedal on, pedal off. But when I went too hot on the other side, I'm gonna show you what too hot looks like. This is what happens, it blows through it. So, too cold of a weld, you will have the weld bump out and around. It'll be circular on it instead of being a flat weld. You should have a little bit of bump to it. Like, fill it in, like take the, take a 90 degree like this and then put a 45 in between it. That's what your weld should look like, filling up that distance between the two. Hot weld, it'll sit like that. It'll look like half a circle or half a donut on top of it. And it won't actually weld anything. It'll be a surface weld and it will crack, it will break. It's not a good day. And you know, they don't look that good either. Too hot of a weld will blow through the other side and will dent into the metal. So if you don't add enough filler rod, or if you're too hot, it will actually take and cut into the metal and drop the metal through the back side of it. So that's another way to tell that you're too hot. So you wanna be right in between it, and the best way to do it is to take pieces of metal that you're going to use to finish weld something, take the same material, and dial it in first. Then make a little notebook. Stainless steel exhaust. 46 amps, boom, you're golden. Aluminum, 98 amps for intercooler piping. You won't blow through it. There's things that you can find on there and just write them down. This is what my settings were for this type of material, this thickness. That way you don't have to go back and test it on the material again. You'll have it written down in your little notebook. You'll know exactly what settings you need to put it to. And then always check your set welder settings. You don't know if one of your buddies comes in here like, I'm ADHD, crazy as hell. I like turning stuff. I like turning knobs. I like hitting buttons. So check your welder settings. I've gone outside, gone and got a drink, came back in, and my welder settings were different. My cup was changed. You know, stuff happens. Always look at the kind of stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed this first episode of Welding Tips and Tricks. Let us know what you think, and drop a comment. Let us know what you want to learn how to weld next.